It's been amazing to be honest. Like players, staff, uh, the fans, the club, every everyone has been extremely welcoming and and obviously it was difficult because I had to travel on I travel on Sunday and, and, and landed here and, and start on, on, on Monday morning. Uh, but with the effort from everyone and the willingness to work it just made everything really easy and the transition has been Absolutely brilliant, so hopefully we can tomorrow start showing a little bit of that work that we're doing, no? Yeah, absolutely. Theo, go ahead. Hi, Han. Uh, f officially welcome, and I hope it's Thank been you. a good first week. Uh, what were you looking to accomplish in your first week, and what did you accomplish in your, in your first week on in, uh, in training? Yeah, well, the, the, the target for this week was to start knowing everyone personally I am a big big fan of my my values are about people and and at the end of the day we are all people so getting to know the players the staff uh, how they do things who they are how they are so getting to know each other it was definitely one of the targets uh, at the same time uh, I got experience coming to a team in the middle of the season it's not the same that when you kind of start in pre-season you got time to adapt time to install your principles your, your values your, your way of doing things you you have I have had to adapt really quick so obviously the other target is uh, we will see tomorrow if we can achieve it because he's uh, beating uh, Chicago on that first first game very very hard our target is to compete our target is to win like it, w it will always be and it will be tomorrow after the game when I can tell you if we accomplished that one or not. We definitely get to know, we got to, to know each other and, and it's over exceed my expectations so that we can definitely tick the box and if we could tick tomorrow that box of getting three points against such a difficult team, it would be, it would be an unforgettable, unforgettable weekend. Well, what are the exercises or what are the ways in which you get to know people and you tick that tick that box? What are the what are the tricks to getting to know your your players or your coach fellow coaches? Well, I think it's trying to spend as much time as you can with them. Sometimes, obviously, I haven't met everyone individually, but there has been some already individual meetings. There has been connections. Uh, on and off the pitch here at the training ground and, and I think that's massively important but also how they how they behave on the pitch I think uh, with experience I've been coaching now for like 24 years so so you quickly know people how they feel in certain situations starting to know how to approach players because uh, you know every per every person is different every person needs a different approach you need to be uh, you know some players need to need to be a bit more pushed some players need to be rewarded at certain moments uh, some players you know it's, it's, it's all I can't explain it because I think it comes with the, with the coaching with the coaching role but I think that's that's massively important and and, and that they know that my door is open uh, that I, I'm here for them they're here for me I will tell them what I think they have to be ready for it we are in a high performance environment uh, but always doing it in a respectful way and in a way that that I help them to to be better because if they are better then the dash is going to be better, and that's my goal. What's it been like working with Sarah, and where have you kind of divided the work up, either with her or with other assistants? Yeah, well, we with Sarah, she's she's been brilliant. Obviously, I I met her before online. It, it was it was a, like a long distance relation already. Uh, it was great to finally meet her in person, and she's been she's been brilliant. The same the that with the rest of the staff, uh, Hero, Michael, Matt, Corey, those are a little bit of on the coaching side, but we have such an amazing supporting supporting staff as well, on the medical, the media, player care, psychologists, you know, it's, you know everyone plays their part and, and everyone, I've been trying to start pointing in the direction that I want to go and and if everyone pushes on that direction, I'm sure we are we are in for a success. We are in for for a success formula. So uh, that's been a little bit of it. And and in terms of the football, obviously we've been trying to touch on key concepts on on every aspect of the game in order to be prepared for the game tomorrow against against Chicago. No? Um, last one for me. I don't want to let some of the other guys have a question. Um, are we expecting? I saw Maria was back in training uh, from Concacaf W. Uh, are we expecting her to have a minutes restriction tomorrow, or is she ready to go? Well, it's a difficult. It's difficult to say because obviously she's had like five games in such a short period of time. Uh, 
obviously the outcome is not what we wanted because for me I want my players when they go internationally to, to be successful in this case unfortunately Mexico uh, didn't get the, the qualification that they were looking for so we will have to really wait till till tomorrow see how they are reco how she recovers uh, she trained last night she will train today and then tomorrow uh, we will make the, the decision if she's ready to, to start or not but she's had a a heavy workload on, on, on these last few weeks. No? Grant, go ahead. Thank you, Theo, very much. Oh, I can hear you, Grant. I think you're talking okay. about something. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Coach. Bienvenido a Houston. Gracias. Um, first, uh, another question on eligibility. Uh, availability for tomorrow. Uh, Elizabeth Eddy was was away with her family for the for the last game. Uh, she posted some updates updates online, but it wasn't clear if she's if she's back yet. Do you know if she's going to be with the team tomorrow? Yeah, Lizzie. Well, first and foremost, uh, I think the obviously now that it's public, it's, it's been a difficult time for her and her family. I think she's very appreciative and she really, you know, she's grateful on the way the club and and everyone has behave her teammates uh, put put something online to help her you know that picture before the game the other day uh, I think the club has been supporting her in in every way or form and and from here I would like to send the best wishes to 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 her dad so hopefully he recovers uh, quickly and with Liz she's been training throughout the week he's been competing with her with her teammates and if she if she finally tomorrow could be could be in the starting lineup and could be on the bench, so she's she's available to to play. Um, so yeah. Great. And um, next we're going to be talking. I think after this to Bri Vasali. Can you uh, share a little bit about about her, your impressions of her, and and what she's up to this week? Uh, Bri Vasali. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's been, you know, she's been fantastic on, on on when she's been on the pitch lately. She's been very good at training as well. Same than than the rest of the midfielders. There is there is definitely talent there. They, they got you know there is different ways of understanding the game. I think uh, Bree Bree is doing really well, and she will play some sort of role tomorrow. I'm not sure if he will be starting yet or if he will be from the bench, but he definitely deserves to be on the pitch at, at some point. Great. Um, y uno, uno más en español, si, sí. si quiere. Claro. Uh, ti, 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 ¿Había un, una sorpresa o, o algo que no, ha, no habías anticipado de, de Houston y, y, y su experiencia aquí? Eh, bueno, pues creo que esa sorpresa ha sido positiva, ¿no? Y ha sido la bienvenida de la gente. Creo que tenía unas expectativas muy altas de cómo era el club, pero no, de mis conversaciones con, con Jess, con, con Ted, pero cuando he llegado aquí creo que gente que no conocía, ¿no? Como much, mucha gente del, del support staff, de la gente, la gente que trabaja alrededor del club, el cómo ellos y ellas quieren y tienen una pasión que es hacer a este Houston Dash un, un equipo ganador en el futuro y cómo están dispuestos a, a trabajar en lo que sea necesario para conseguirlo, creo que ha sido, ha sido para mí la sorpresa más gratificante de momento. Muy bien, uh, buena suerte para el primer partido mañana. Muchas gracias, Gran, te lo agradezco, a ver si, a ver si es verdad y, y tenemos esa pizquita de suerte, ¿no? que al final en el fútbol hay que trabajar para conseguirla, pero también hay que tenerla y encontrarla. Gracias. Luke, go ahead. Hey, um, when you were approached about taking over the team and since uh, you've been watching them long distance, what similarities have you seen between the Dash and the other teams that you coached? Uh, that is, uh, you know, like maybe in the offensive side, maybe it's a bit more similar to to the team that we had in, in... I think it's more similar. I think the Dash is a bit more similar to the team I had at Spurs in, in Tottenham, a bit more than what it is uh, to, to Real Betis. Um, 
I think we, there is a very solid, very solid goalkeeper with with a lot of experience that we had in both. I think the team defensively uh, is very physical. Um, maybe at Betis we had a very strong player, but I think physicality, the the English ones were or the, the Spurs was a bit a bit stronger. Uh, and I think that one thing that he matches on, on the three cases is that. There are uh, players that are willing to learn, there are players that are willing to work hard, there are players that are uh, willing to develop, uh, and I think that's, that's massively important. Uh, and there are players that maybe now that people don't, you know, they don't pay that much attention to them because they're not playing every game, but I've seen already some special talent maybe with some people that, that wasn't on that page. So um, I hope uh, I can help these players develop. and and to achieve uh, big things uh, for me, as I said, at international or, or in the club level, uh, helping players and people to develop is one is one of my targets. I was commenting before, like one two girls that when I get to bet when I got to Betis, they were only 16 years old and they weren't they weren't professional. Like last Sunday, they become uh, and they were in international. They became uh, European national uh, European champions under 19 with Spain at the age of 17 and. Uh, or, one seventeen, the other one eighteen already. So for me, see if if I can do that with players here and develop uh, players that can become international, so that are internationals and help them to to be more successful in their career, it will be it will be great. And then uh, back in March, you did an interview with Tactical Rant, and you talked about the the phases of the game that are important to you. Mm -hmm. um, which which one do you think the dash are currently strongest in? Well, the dash is definitely. I think at the moment, uh, the uh, probably the counter attack is, uh, you know, that tra offensive transition at pace is something that because of the characteristics of our players is something that that the dash and and, and the the data is there is where they've been the more dangerous. Um, so yeah, I think that would be the one. Good luck, on Fred. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, go ahead. Hi Juan, I would said a couple more if that's okay. Um, one sort of on the data uh, and, and the phases of play as, as Louis was saying, the last game was arguably the Dash's worst game, uh, especially on the attacking side of the ball, really struggled to create chances. We saw Ebony Salmon kind of completely disappear um, in the second half especially. What has your kind of coming in, are you looking at that last game and, and, and dissecting it and saying, you know, this is what went wrong, this is what went wrong, or is it about getting space from that, it kind of walk me through what you've been looking at, what you've seen from the recent performances or performances before that may be, and, and how has that played into your preparation? Yeah, I think that, that, that only focusing on one game is not realistic. No, like uh, football with coaches, trust me, not only um, us here, every coach uh, does a lot of work to try to help the team. Uh, obviously, the last game, it wasn't a, a very good game. Even with that, probably was a game to draw in new because I don't think Orlando didn't do that much neither to, to win that game. Uh, but I think overall the performance of the team and under Sarah and all the coaching team has been fantastic given the, circun the circumstances and the change of roster between last year and this year and, and everything that has been happening. So uh, I think that in terms of that, the team has been performing fantastically well. So. It's a question, we haven't really looked at that game that much, it's been an, an overall analysis of what can be our strengths and uh, going forward, how we want to play, how we want to obviously face face this very difficult game against Chicago, we want to go out there, we want to compete, we want, we want to try to win, uh, uh, we want to win the game obviously against against a very difficult side and we'll be more focusing on what we want to do against Chicago more than what we didn't do right against against Orlando, if that makes sense. And when you talk about the faces, we've tried to install some principles in, in every single one of them, what do we want to do in possession, in the in the counter press when we, want, when we lose the ball, what we want to do on well, we have to defend a bit more organized and, and in the counter-attack and also in, in the set pieces. So it's been a lot of information trying to three feed it and divide it during the week so the players don't get overloaded and, and hopefully tomorrow you can see uh, certain patterns or, or certain ways of doing things that, that you and, and all that are who, who come to the stadium or watch on tele nationally or internationally uh, enjoy because that's the reason why we do what we do. Should we expect many tactical shifts or is it about getting the things that were already there right? 
I think it is uh, for me with the tactical changes. I'm, a, you know, I think that football is a very dynamic, uh, very dynamic game. I don't really like talking too much about shapes because you know it changes constantly. Like sometimes it looks more like a like a three-five-two. Sometimes it looks more like a four-five-one. But but there will be there will be something uh, that change. Uh, but as you say, it's a question of uh, it's more about making ways working uh, you know in make that stronger and and fix the things that are not working more than completely change everything fantastic my only final final question yeah, is can't see can, no, no spain win the, can spain win the euros yeah of course every team that is in the competition can win the euros uh, obviously uh, in football details make the difference and when you lose players like jenny hermoso and alexia putellas just before, no, to to such they are key key players for the national team, uh, so it will be a bit more difficult and challenging. Uh, but I think, well, you know, I, I really hope that that they can be, no, they can win that that game that we have left in the group, and they can go through and from the uh, go and and try to to make Spain win finally a, a senior tournament because there is definitely Spain is definitely at the moment the best the best country in the youth tournament so hopefully in in the Euros they can they can go and win it and they'll be playing England in the next round.